Nobody wakes up in the morning thinking, I'm going to go to a and &E today. Nobody knows. Nobody knows who it's going to be. Pediatric trauma call, 15 minutes. Code red, helipad response. You're having a heart attack. We want to be in and out of scan in the next 10 minutes. I can't feel any pulse. Reception, can I help you? Yeah, 24 hours, seven days a week. I love that question. What's your opening hours? St George's, London. One of the busiest and most advanced A&E departments in the world. Beautiful. It's as if we've done it before. We are there when awful things happen to pick up the pieces. We have a two-year-old who's kicked by the horse. We see the unpredictableness of what happens in life, and we're suddenly having to explain why it's gone wrong. I can't feel my left leg. You'll be OK. A place where life... Amy, Sophie! Don't be low. Too slow. <laughs> Love. Such a big boy. I'm so proud of you. And loss. I'm still here. Unfold every single day. So we don't shake hands at this hospital. We fist bump. Can I have a fist bump? <laughs> All the patients you're about to see were treated in just one 24-hour period. Hello, darling. You genuinely do see the best of people in this job. You'll see strangers rushing to the aid of someone they've never met. You just see things that make you realise just how important the people in your life are and the people around you are. As a major London trauma centre, St George's Emergency Department treats almost 3,000 patients every week. A fifth of these are children. I spy with my little eye something beginning with PC. Can you give me a clue? It's really useful when you have small children. We don't have one anymore, but we used to have one. Oh. Buggies. OK, buggy, push chair. No, they're called buggies. Hello, any recess? The most critical patients, whether adults or children, are treated in resus, where consultant Will has just started an eight-and-a-half-hour shift. I became a dad for the first time in December of last year. It's the best thing I've ever done, but it's the scariest thing I've ever done, and it's the hardest thing I've ever done. In the first couple of weeks, especially, you can't prepare for being that tired. And I've, I've worked some pretty bad rotors, you know. <laughs> You've done 24-hour on calls and whatnot. And I've still never been so tired in my life as I was the first couple of weeks he was around. You all right, man? Yeah, I could do with the feet. Could do with the feet. <laughs> could do with the break, get some heat. Yeah, get a break. But equally, no one can prepare you for just how amazing it is watching them change every day and just change from that tiny little baby. And every day they get a little bit more like a, a little boy. That's just incredible. Can you come and get me? Becoming a dad did change the way I was at work. I am a little more affected by certain cases, but it makes you better at what you do. George's resource. Okay. Male or female? Okay. Mm hmm. On the in the helicopter. Okay. Ten minutes. So it's a hand. Hand. I can't recall for that. A first of all, the helipad response team to the helipad and a paediatric trauma call with it. A 
three-year-old child is on his way to recess after being hit by a car whilst playing outside his home. Three years old, and he's been run over by a car. Run over means the wheel's gone over them. Dealing with children is unique in a lot of ways. It's impossible for anyone, really, not to have that added level of anxiety and that added level of, of fear. There is something just inherently emotive about treating sick children. And it's a Hems crew that's seen them, so they might actually mean the wheel has gone over them. They're querying a pelvic injury. Children respond differently to injuries than adults. It's a completely different game. Have we got the paediatric surgeon? Seven, four, zero. He's just landed. Is everybody happy with the plan and where we're going? After seeing the severity of his injuries, paramedics requested an air ambulance to bring the boy and his mother to St George's. It was just a hot summer's day and I'd been at work. Summer's evening, you probably have about 20 children out there at one time. He was on his skateboard with his other little friend, just skating around, and then I went upstairs to put my bag in. And that was the moment it happened. world just gets totally turned upside down by by seconds. Okay, you ready for a handover? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll tell you all about him. Oh. Okay, so this is Louis. Louis oh. three, nearly four. And about an hour ago, a car has reversed over him completely. With the rear wheels and with the front wheels. Injuries from top to toe. He does appear to be moving his neck over to the right side all the time. He's got some bruising and abrasions over the right side of his abdomen. And we're concerned there's a possible abdominal bleed, possibly a pelvic injury. OK, can we draw these curtains over? Yeah. My name's Johnny Louie, I'm one of the bone doctors. Can I have a feeling to your neck? Uh, 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 I'm not going to touch anything. Uh, 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 Children often compensate for their injuries. And when they fail to do that, that often means they're extremely unwell. And then any intervention you make has to be done quickly. What's going on with that neck? We need to have a proper look at him. Just going to slip this down a little bit. Wow, still not moving his neck. We need to scan him. Are we on the trolley oxygen? All right, let's go. It's been 40 minutes since three-year-old Louis arrived in recess after being hit by a car. Doctors are concerned the impact has caused irreversible damage to his neck and spine. So the wee three-year-old, he's been run over. Front back wheels have gone over. He's got bruising on his chest, across the pelvis, um, but his head has been stuck in that rotated position. He hasn't moved it. The bony pelvis is a concern. The other slight worry I've got is I haven't actually seen him move either of those lower limbs. He's only three. As soon as we know what's going on, yeah. we'll be pretty much as soon as we've done the scan, yeah. we'll open the door and get you back in, OK? Since becoming a dad, you have a sort of added a bit of empathy with the parents. You, you understand why that situation is so terrifying for them in a way that you never really did before. I've got three daughters, so when I found out I was pregnant with Louie, it totally felt different from all the other pregnancies straight away, cos I'm carrying my son. What's he going to be like? It's just a total, totally different love. I just can't describe it. I mean, I say I love them all the same, but there's just that 
Just that little percent for Lou. Life just froze. Everything flashed through my head from the day he was born. You kind of kick yourself thinking, well, did I do that enough with him? Was there enough individual times that I had with Louis? Vikings, they're saying the Vikings came up with sarcasm. You know what sarcasm is? I know what um, sarcastic means. Yeah. Just, mm, I, don't, I don't get the other word, sarcasm. Somebody who's sarcastic is using sarcasm. Oh. So sarcastic is describing the person doing it. Can we not pick our nose? <laughs> my leg. Just... Dad, uh, why? Oh, all right, don't worry about it. Mm. Oh, but you carry on with it first. Okay. Mm -hmm. Slow. <laughs> <laughs> noises, okay? Oh, shit. 14 year old Josh has come to St George's with his parents, Simon and Helen, after falling off his bike and hurting his ankle. Every time you get a pain in your leg, just inhale. He was sat on the handlebars of his BMX whilst his dad pedalled when the accident happened. <laughs> that is quite funny, actually. He's been brought to resus while doctors await the results of an X-ray. It's not like I'm his dad. It's like I'm a friend of his. It's me and him get on like a house on fire. The only difference between me and him is I've got tattoos and he's 20 years younger than me and better looking. <laughs> I just had to laugh then for some reason. <laughs> we kind of do a lot together when he's about. Go out and do power kiting. Got petrol remote control cars that we go out and race on the common. Yeah, there's loads of stuff that we go and do with each other and just have a bit of a laugh. It seems to be he's slightly getting older and getting more energy, and I'm getting a bit older and getting a little bit slower. <laughs> Come on. I like it. Come on. Yeah. 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 I like it. <laughs> it's so nice. Josh's X-ray shows that his ankle is broken in two places and will need realigning before any further treatment. Yeah, well, I just feel really, really Keep fast. going, keep breathing. Keep My darling, we need to ask you something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> About your trousers. Will you be really mad with us if we cut your trousers, or do you want to take them off? Just cut one leg. Yeah. I've got, got some new ones in the house. So it's alright. Up to you. I don't know. You can oh, cut them. He's got, he's got like, just just cut yeah. enough room so you can do that thing. <laughs> yeah, only cut it off yeah, after this. Oh my god. <laughs> the things that me and you get ourselves into, eh? Right? Josh has said, I want to be like you, Dad. He said, because you're just so nice and you just don't panic about anything. Try and keep a smile on your face a lot of the time. Bit of a strange one having somebody say, Yeah, I want to be like my dad. Because I'd, I'd like him to be like a fireman or something like that, not like me. <laughs> right. <laughs> I love this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Just looks really odd. Yeah, he, he reckons it's because uh, that's it just looks weird, but that he thinks that's a posterior laceration. It's been just over an hour since three-year-old Louis arrived in Resus. Doctors have received the initial results of his CT scan.
but are still concerned about the lack of movement in his neck. Hello. Hello again, Louis. He's sick of me. So what we are worried about at the moment, he's broken a bone in his leg here. He's broken his femur, his thigh okay. bone. Um, and he's got a little injury to his lung. Does he? Yes, yeah, so the two big ones are the broken bone in the leg. Yeah. And we need to get a bit more information about the neck. I'm just going to have a wee look. Now, Louis, have you got any pain in your neck? He still yeah. keeps looking this way rather than going all the way over. If your mum came I'll over here... Can you have a look at me? Is it sore when you do that? <laughs> it's all right. It's okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's all right. The issue with the spine, we're not 100% happy with. Okay. So I'm going to ask one of our neurosurgeons to have a little look at it. I'm this side. Is it more comfortable if I'm this side? Yeah. Okay. I'll stay here then. I know it hurts. I've got to stay indoors. Yeah, you're going to have to stay indoors for a little while. You won't be able to go out and play. <sighs> to take it easy, Lulu. I just can't hit me. I know, that car hit you, didn't it? Naughty car, wasn't it? Didn't see you. This is why Mummy tells you you've got to stay on the grass, eh? I've got to the car. I know. When you're a child, things aren't really in your control because your parents have control of your life. With Louis that day, the control was just taken away. It wasn't me that was dressing his wounds. It wasn't me healing him or giving him medicine like when you give cowpole. I kind of looked at these people and distrusted them with my little boy and said, there you go, do what you can and please help him. Such a big boy. So proud of you. So proud of you. Hey? Okay. You okay? Amy St George's. 41 female. Yeah. Carve. Yeah. Seven minutes. Okay, thank you. Female trauma, hems by air, ETA seven minutes. By air? Yeah. Helipad response in seven minutes, but we'll have to take this straight to sleep, please. 41-year-old motorist is being airlifted to St George's after a head-on collision with a tree. Her husband is following by road. I was supposed to be on a late shift at work. The phone went off and it was one of Sam's work colleagues. He said Sam's had an accident. I put the phone down and then ran to the car. Can I have a receptionist to recess, please? Receptionist to recess. So how many spaces have we got in here at the moment? Two. Two. The woman was trapped inside the car for over an hour whilst emergency services worked to free her. We're getting a trauma straight to CT, hence air. When I arrived at the accident, the paramedics were putting on bits all over her face and she was just covered in blood. So I just stood back. If we are going in there, we won't have everyone in there for now, just because it's going to get too many people. I walked down to the car. I remember looking in there and seeing blood, all red, around by the steering wheel. The passenger seat was in the ditch on the right, and there was no tailgate, no nothing at the back. In my head, I was thinking, why is she not in that ambulance? It's been over an hour. Why isn't she in the ambulance? This is Sam. Sam's 41. She was the restrained driver of a small hatchback car. It came off the road and collided with a tree at approximately 40 miles an hour about 90 minutes ago. She was trapped in the driver's seat and there was intrusion of the roof by her head. Injuries top to toe. She appears to have some fr right frontal and sort of parietal lacerations. She has tenderness on the left side of her chest. She may also have some concealed bleeding within her abdomen as she did drop her blood pressure shortly after our arrival. We've put a pelvic binder on, there may be a fracture. Thank you. Thank you. Right. 
Right, guys, stabilise the head, get her off the scoop. Scoop. Ooh, broken at the top. Happy with the head? Yeah, happy with the head. We are bracing from the right. Let's get our monitoring on, Johnny, if you're happy to do a primary survey. Hi, Sam, my name's Johnny, I'm one of the bone doctors. We're just going to do a quick examination of you from top to bottom. Oh. Which side's painful? Which one? OK. Left side of thoracic tenderness. Yeah, I'll start away. Is that painful there? Yeah. Right upper quadrant tenderness. Oh. Left upper quadrant tenderness with guarding. It's just doing that. All right, guys, if we can start filing out. All the way to St George's, in my head, I was thinking, just be calm. I had to just man up. It's been 14 minutes since 41-year-old Sam arrived at St George's after losing control of her car and crashing into a tree. Apparently she's really hard to cannulate as well. She's been brought straight to CT to check for damage to her spine and internal organs. I work for a VIP airline company and one of the blokes there was having a party above, shoe shopping Crawley. I went from the rest of my friends from work. I remember seeing her just on the other side of the room. She was happy and very joyful. I can remember our first song, it's by Madonna. You expect it to be a bit higher than that, yeah. Yeah. You know, just talked, etc. I think I took her home that night. I was 20 years old, so that's 25 years just over 25 years that we met. It's got the little art line trace as it's bouncing over the radio artery. We never really discussed having a family. She said that she'd had leukaemia and she'd fought through it and was told she wasn't going to have children. But it was her who I loved. It's not worth throwing someone away when you, because they can't have children. Have the scan. We're going to take you around into the resource room now. We'll have a, another look at you. Get some blood off because we haven't managed to take any blood. Right. You are just amazing. Has that small, medium, and large? She has different size hands. Mine is small, so I. Let's have a look. Let's see if your hands. They're actually quite big. Yeah, I think they were there for grown ups, you see, because it hasn't got so bad in the NHS oh, that we have to start employing children. Not yet, anyway. No, I don't have dolls. No, you can spit as much as you like in your tissues, and your hands will stay nice and clean. <laughs> <laughs> Just nice, that's it. Just like that. <laughs> Josh has been inhaling pain-relieving gas, so doctors can attempt to realign the bones in his ankle. Uh, oh, oh, why am I laughing? Because you are a laughing at Tommy C. <laughs> oh, I can't. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I walked out of school when I was 16, so I had no GCSEs. You know, I was just staying out till four or fives in the morning with my mates and clubbing and raving and everything like that. I never thought I'd have my first child at the age of 20. <laughs> Dad, you got to get me some of this. <laughs> it's nice. Josh being born was going to be the most important part of my life. I needed to have everything perfect. I had to have it. And yeah, I made a stupid mistake. 
<laughs> Have you had the gas before? No. <laughs> Neither do I, but after these, I'm... <laughs> it, it's good. It's good. <laughs> when I found out I had a son that was going to be born in nine months, I took on a lot of work. I was working four days in a motorcycle shop. I was going to college. Then I was going to my evening job, which was working for Blockbusters, and that was seven days a week. It seemed like I never had enough money. Someone offered me an opportunity. He said to me, there's nothing to worry about. The other guy that was involved, he had all the safe numbers and he had all the combinations. I thought about it and I thought about it and I thought about it and yeah, eventually I thought it was a good idea. I planned the robbery of Blockbusters. It was a staged robbery. It was a bit like a theatre play, basically. Here he comes. Hey, can I take this gas off? No. I need you to breathe this gas, which is even better. Oh. Wait on that. You're going to like this gas? Doesn't make you laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I love that laughing gas. I definitely get some. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, put my leg down. Yeah, keep your leg down. It's okay, Josh. It's done. Okay. Just bring it. Ah. Yeah. Sure. Just listening. Do you want to? We've got our relatives room out just outside. If you want to sit outside for a minute. Oh, hmm? No, sure. I'd rather I was here because I know what it's like. Tea, no, I'm fine, thanks. Sure. Yeah, thank right. you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> When they caught me, it was a case of, yeah, I put my hands up. There's no point in saying, no, it's not me, I didn't do it. I had so much remorse because it was something stupid. And the only reason that I'd done it was to make sure my son had the best start in life. I ended up in prison for six months. I was told I was going to get early release and I was hoping it was going to be just before he was born. I was pacing up and down the cell of a night time just wanting the days to pass quicker. Josh was born on the 19th of April and I was released on the 28th of April. Josh, deep breath. It's meant to be the best thing that could happen to anybody, being there whilst your child's being born, and yeah, it's still a bit going now. I don't like to think of it too much. <laughs> oh. Josh, Josh. Have just ever. No, no, <laughs> don't need it no more. How'd your leg feel, mate? Right. All right. Does it feel a lot better than it did? I'm tired. Yeah. Make sure you keep breathing that bag in, though, mate. Yeah. She's tender, and we were worried about a spleen, so she, that could be acute. Doctors have received the initial results of Sam's CT scan, but are still waiting for the final report to ensure the car accident has caused no damage to her spine. Hey, Sam. They've managed to get a message to your partner to come this way. Uh -huh. So we'll wait for him as soon as you're here. If you're happy, we'll bring him in. Uh -huh. That's what we'll ask you first. Yeah. You have, if you're having some more painkillers and some more anti-sickness medicines, the experts will be looking at the scan. Has have you been known to have a low blood pressure? Oh, I've got a bit of and gallbladder out. And leukaemia, for which you're in remission. 
Yeah, you've been through the mill, haven't you? Yeah. I'll come back to you in a bit, my dear. Okay. Thank you. Your husband's here. Do you want them to come in? Yeah? So we've just all precautionary at the moment. That's why there's these blocks that it's a bit scary. All right? When I got there, yeah, yeah, the air ambulance had landed in the field beside us. Your car, the car was on its side in the ditch. There was a big tree <laughs> starting to come in the top of the car. So, yeah. We'd been married four years. She'd always been honest and told me she couldn't have children. But one day, she was just late coming on. So we said, well, we'll go and buy the test just, you know, just to try it. We did that, left it on the side, sat in the living room, like the two little patient kids, and then went over to it, found out, and that was it. Samantha fell pregnant naturally. We were mega, we were very happy over the moon. The labour was long and it was an evening before Charlotte came along. They put Charlotte in the blanket, washed the face. I was sitting there with Charlotte in my arms and I just sat there and looked at her. We, we got a daughter. She was a, our miracle. She made our family complete and it didn't make any difference whether we had any more or anything. We'd have got our one and we were moving along. So happy. When I was little, my mum told me that I was a miracle baby. As she had leukaemia when she was six or seven. And she got told that she'd never have kids. My mum did spend a lot of time in hospital when I was little and throughout my whole life. She could be out within the next two days or she could be in four weeks later. Like one year she was in hospital over Christmas. It did bother me because it was Christmas, but also that year, it was the year that everything was flooding. We, we had a power cut down our road. We couldn't get to her some days. So when she is in hospital, I'm used to the feeling. When I first held um, my son in the hospital, there is definitely a sense that the two people you love more than anything, and to the exclusion of anything else in your world, are in that room. And it's the first time we've, all three of you have been together as separate human beings, and it is pretty amazing. and just relax for a little while. Well, put your hand that way then, yeah? And just relax a little bit. Like Superman. Like Superman, yeah. Or like this. That's how Superman flies, isn't it? Having revealed a broken bone in his leg and damage to his neck, Will has requested a neurosurgical assessment for Louis. In my nose. What's in your nose? It's a little thing to help you breathe better, I think. Is it annoying you? Oh, what? The bogeys on my nose. You've got bogeys, bogeys in your nose, yeah, I know. There was nothing else that I ever wanted to be than was to be a mum. Because I, I was... My older part of my life, I was brought up in foster care from the age of 12. Um, I did have more than one foster home, so I kind of... When lived in lots of different environments. Better? Is that a bit more comfortable? Yeah? I never knew my own dad anyway, so my, my childhood was void. I never had the normal family Christmases, the family walks in the park, the constant noise in the house of the kids running around. It just didn't happen. I want to play with your hair. You want to play with my hair? Yeah. Oh, 
Don't be like, I'll try and get you some. That's where you go to sleep, isn't it? <sighs> yeah. Blow my hair and go to sleep. Is that better? Yeah. My life began at probably 16, because that's when my life changed and I had children. You're a good boy. You're so brave. Braver than me. And that kind of moulded me from this minute I gave birth to my first daughter. That was what I wanted to be. That was just what I wanted. And then and every couple of they were all planned. Every single one of my children were absolutely planned. I just knew that I would put my all into making sure that no matter what happened, I would never leave that child's side. And I would be there for like every waking hour of the day for them and never would never even enter my fault to ever leave them ever. I love you lots and lots and lots. Doctors have temporarily reset Josh's broken ankle ahead of further assessment. I'll take this thing off. So what do they do, what? It's plastered. So when they now come to operate, it'll make it easier because it won't hurt. I didn't feel it. I know. What? Got <laughs> some more laughing gas now? No. You Why? don't need no more. But it's fun. Yeah, it would be. Just keep breathing and get some sleep. Straight away, there was an instant bond between me and him. There was just something there instantly, and it's always stayed there. There's nothing quite like having your own child in your arms when you've missed their birth. It's an overwhelming feeling. It takes the whole of you from the inside and it just makes everything feel so super happy. But I still don't look straight. Oh, no, it is. But my leg's burning. <laughs> What's wrong? He's going to it's hot. It's hot. <laughs> that doesn't normally happen. I don't know. <laughs> How would you know you never had done before? What? <laughs> yeah, I know. I know that's not supposed to happen. That's what I'm complaining about. <laughs> One thing that I would hope that he would have would be patience and a really good sense of humour. I mean, somebody sneezes, you bless them, don't you? You say, bless you. He's done that many a times when people have walked past and they've sneezed, and he'll turn around and go, bless you. It's just a nice thing to do. Oh, it hurts a little bit. We'll get you another pillow underneath. <laughs> ah, 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 what a bear win. <laughs> How's it going? Is that any better? It's nice. It's nice. It's nice. So nice. This is. <laughs> but as long as he's got my mentality when it comes to the way that you treat people and just be nice to people, you know, then I'm happy. <laughs> Otherwise, I end up crushing these ones. Josh is being taken for a further scan, where specialists will decide whether or not his ankle requires an operation. Sorry, I was just wheeling him off. To see there. if it looks nice, and if, it, see looks if it looks nice. nice. It looks very you nice. You don't have to do an operation on it tomorrow. You just feel a little bit funny because of all the medicine, that's all. Neurosurgeons have arrived to assess the damage in Louis's neck. OK, I'm still here. Hello. 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 This is Louis, yes? yes. Did they explain why he was worried about his neck and why he's got to wear this thing on his neck? Somebody said that something came up on the scan, yeah. but I wasn't told what it was on the scan. OK. So, nothing's broken. The top two bones of the spine should come in, you know, the one and two. Yeah. They move by rotation and they've over-rotated. OK. And they've probably got to the limits of their movement and jammed <laughs> there a bit. OK. Um, oh, Lulu, not. hey. Is he good? Will he mind if I give his neck a little bit of a... No. Lulu, look. Well, it's if okay. it's too bad, then I won't. Don't worry. Oh, good boy. It's all right, Mummy's still so here. I'm just look gonna, at Mummy. I'm just going to take off your yellow collar. Oh, is that start. a bit better? Is that better? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good, good. All right, we're getting on right. Mind your neck. Good boy. Yeah, there you go. Good man. <laughs> Where's it hurting, Lou? <laughs> <laughs> Good lad. Calm down. Good boy. Well done. 
Yeah. Louis, can you look over to me over here if I promise not to put my hands anywhere? See if you can see the man's badge. Can you, you see, see what he's got I've on his got, badge? I've got three badges. Look Jeez. at his picture on his badge, Louis. But look, that's me riding my bike at the weekend. Look, can you look all over here? Good lad. Your neck is back to normal. Oh, you're at games. <laughs> <laughs> Want your mum round here? Should I go that side? Mm. Want your yeah. mum round here? <laughs> Can we have another go at putting your collar back on? I don't want it on. You don't want it on? I want it off. You want it off? <laughs> I really would like it to stay on just for the evening. Do you want me to put it on or do you want one of the girls to put it on? I want mum to put it on. Well, mummy can do it. She'll be yeah. right. She's a pro. Let me to do it. Yeah. Okay, guide you got to look up a wee bit. Look up a little bit, Lou. Is that, is that straight, yeah? Yeah. yeah. You're doing your touch OK. That's it, perfect. Oh, my God, I missed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lulu, you done brilliant. You did so well, didn't you? Yeah. So proud of you. I love you. Doctors have received the final report of Sam's CT scan. All right. Hello. Me again. So your um, CT report is good. There's no injuries to any of the significant organs, or any of the organs. There's no injuries to your spine. So we're happy to sit you up, OK? You've got grass and bits of blood and all kinds of things. And... Do you want to stand outside for a minute? We'll, we'll, we'll clean you up and we'll have a look at the wounds and stuff, all right? Well done. Sam spending so much time in hospital has made our relationship stronger. We are a close family, just the three of us. We always sit downstairs, have dinner, we'd play fight over the TV controller. I know I'm the favourite child because I'm the only child, but I'm also mega spoiled. Pom? Nice to see you. Looking from here. All right, you've got a cut. You can see a mark on your nose there. Stay. Sorry. I think I'm. Marriage is unique. There's not a lot of affection, but there is. We just don't show it in public as such. I remember the wedding vows, and I smile. I'll always be there for her, no matter what happens. Brian? You need it. I can tell you. Then, what's the same? There, put the... Uh, Um, hopefully in 10 minutes. Perfect. Cool. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, whenever, whenever you're happy. I do think being a doctor gives you a, a view on people's lives that you just don't get in any other field of work. And you do see a wide variety of parents, and you see different parenting styles, and they're all just focused on love for their children. And that's the one thing they've all got in common. There's one quality I'd like to give my son, that he'll grow up believing in the inherent goodness of people. I'm hopeful that he'll be a, a glass half full sort of person. Nothing else really matters. We've got closer since the accident. 
We go out more when we're off together and go for strolls at the park or go down to the beach and get some fish and chips. There is so much I want to do. I want to do a bungee jump, I want to jump from a plane, um, a parachute jump, and I will achieve it. I've always been close to my kids anyway. This makes you just hug them that little bit more tighter every day. You can't stop everything in the world. You really can't, which is why I always just say every day, hug your kids tighter and just love them that little bit more if you possibly could. Hello, St George's Annie. Adults from the life is called 10 minutes. When you see a patient having a stroke, it's much more acute. You're having to make decisions quickly. You could see her eyes and that she just wasn't there. She was gone. You're having a bit of difficulty getting the words out. If not treated quickly, that part of the brain will die. Carol, please. Time is brain, basically. <laughs> <laughs>